It couldn't be that a guy who claimed he took a hit of acid, that he got from Laguna Beach from Timothy Leary in the Brotherhood of Eternal Love, saw a vision of all the West Coast filled with hippies crying out to Christ. It couldn't be the impact of Lonnie Frisbee would be so great that Time Life magazines came out to take photos and make major news of it, labeling it as the Jesus Revolution. It couldn't be that after meeting Chuck Smith of Calvary Chapel, that it would grow through Lonnie Frisbee from 200 to 2,000 in just six months. It couldn't be that Lonnie would minister at John Wimber's Vineyard Church on Mother's Day and the Spirit of God fell so powerfully that it launched the Vineyard Churches throughout the entire world. It couldn't be that evangelists like Greg Laurie could come to Christ through Lonnie and now have worldwide ministries. It couldn't be that Lonnie Frisbee contacted AIDS after a six-month affair in Laguna Beach and later died of it March 12, 1993, and he's buried behind the Crystal Cathedral. It couldn't be that he is rarely brought up even in the history timeline of these churches. Instead, they referred to him as the hippie young man. It couldn't be Lonnie was ostracized by the very denominations he had a major part in launching and starting. It couldn't be that God used a young man who danced on American Bandstand, had been molested as a boy, was a fantastic artist, loved people with all his heart, but struggled with his sexual orientation off and on his whole life. It couldn't be that some people reading this post are going to judge this post and even Lonnie again, though dead in his grave, but still rewarded in heaven. How could it be? There are Facebook friends I have met who were actually baptized by Lonnie Frisbee back in the day. I am not here to give the answers. I'm here to raise the question.